What's good to the tribe? It's Wanagi. Stopping by today, I wanted to try a little something different. Go back to a place when um, I really love digging on this, this information that we dig on. When I first started my journey, I used to take a lot of times looking at the pictures and different things they showed of Aboriginal indigenous people of America and just showing their world. It's, it's crazy because I am I was on Clubhouse and I'm hopping in out of our rooms and um, you have the Pan-Africans or so to say Pan-Africans in this room with um, real Africans and they're just dogging the Nagas of the Americas. dog saying how we can't be who we say we are and just trying to give their explanation of why we can't so today i'm gonna take it back a little simple for you guys we talk about a lot of these other places that have indigenous tribes and there's not many of them left because a lot of them have been colonized and conquered and we can see the things that's happening to to Africa and things like that now. Which is crazy, we came from Africa, right? You would think they would be the first to be totally colonized, but I'm gonna take it to Papua New Guinea and the Aboriginal tribes there. I don't know how many people, when you first started your journey, did you ever go to look at these videos? And I'm gonna put some of the clips in this video just so y'all can see what I'm talking about. But make sure you guys hit the description tab and check out the actual video. It's a five part series. And just watch how these indigenous Aboriginal tribes deal with, with people or things that are unknown to them. And I want you to look at their features. And I want you to look at their skin and their hair. I want you to look at everything that's going on around them and then go back to what you've read about the Americas and the indigenous, the Aboriginal people here. But first I wanna start off showing you how it is when Aboriginal tribes meet or come in contact with people they've never seen before or never thought existed. Philip has been on previous expeditions with me, and he knows these stone axes have deadly weapons. It's crazy just watching and looking at them, right? And seeing the feathers in their hair. And not all of them have feathers in their hair, only certain ones. Certain ones are leading the tribe. They're in this woodland type area. Their hair is 
is a tight curl pattern, just like our hair is a tight curl pattern. We talk about feathers up. They talk about the feathers putting it in their hair. And I'm not talking about the long Plains Indian headdress. I'm talking about feather crowns. I'm talking about feathers sticking out of their hair. I used to always say when I started my first lives, right? I started talking when I first started making videos. You are built for your surrounding. Do you guys think you're built for Africa? Or do you think you're built for the Americas? So I guarantee it, if they didn't cut down half of the trees they cut down here, it would kind of look like we were coming out the woods or coming out the woods lands like these Papua New Guinea Aboriginals are. Like I say, if you took off your clothes and got booty butt naked, and ran in the woods, would you disappear? Or would you stick out like a light? It's just crazy to, to, to get the description from, from people that have colonized places or people that have traveled and, and documented how the aboriginals look from the shore. And the way they're explained or a way they explain these aboriginals, they look just like these people here. Slowly, cautiously, they explore this alien land on the other side of the river. Following the example of explorers of centuries past, Dutilleux tries to win over the natives with a mirror. Which a couple of them look like my cousins. Or look like they could be related. Like we say, it was melanated people across the plain, across the earth, or whatever you want to call this place. It was always dark-skinned people on every continent. No continent was missed, it was people everywhere. It was people everywhere. And then people migrated out and mixed up and things like that happened. But I just wanted to take it a little bit back to where I started from, to get my, get my ideas rolling in my brain just thinking about this Aboriginal from America or just knowing that it's one of the biggest kept secrets in the world. That most black, African-American, colored, Negro, whatever you decide or think you want to call yourself, most of their bloodlines go back to these indigenous people here. Most of them. And I'm not saying everybody's 100% full-blooded anything. We're all mixed with something. We're all mixed with something. But just knowing more about who you are is, is, is a better thing and a better way of having it just to be able to trace yourself back and knowing, stemming where your bloodlines come from. But just a little food for thought for the day. I, jumping in out of those, those chats kind of had me thinking like, are people really this naive to what's going on? Or do people just not give a fuck? Simply say it. But I love you guys. Feathers up, tribe up, wise up, Rise up.